And uh, let's, let's just say this out loud like we mean it. Every promise in this book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. This word is in me. This word works in me. I am what this word says I am. I can do what this word says I can do. The favor of God goes before me, preparing my way for good things. And from this moment forward, my life, my home, and my church will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you this morning. You can uh, be seated. I'd like you to turn with me uh, to just one chapter for now. One chapter is all you're going to need to turn to, and the rest you'll just have to trust me on. But uh, Luke chapter 17, Luke's gospel, uh, the 17th chapter. And today... um, If it's okay with you, I'm going to start a little series called uh, Worship. Actually, we're we're just, we can't get out of it. I'm telling you guys, I I feel that there has been a, and some of you that have just kind of joined us here in the last several weeks, we we have been, we started um, three months or so ago, we started a series on worship that was supposed to last about three weeks, and here we are, we're still in it. I just, I, I, I try, I have tried, like you can't even imagine how many ways to, to, to skirt, get to get, to take a different, and every time I do, the Lord keeps bringing me right back to it, but that must, that must mean he's, and I actually talked to a pastor friend of mine about it, and I asked, I said, ever, have happened, ever had that happen to you, and he said, yeah, he says, it's, and, and you better do it too, he says, God's, he says, it tells, sounds like God's trying to do something in your church, and, uh, and, I, and he says, have you seen a difference, and I said, I have. I have seen a difference. And so anyway, we're, we're talking about worship. But today, specifically, we're talking about, here's the title. If you'd like to write titles down on top of your notes, it's Worship is Expressed Gratitude. So worship is expressed uh, gratitude. So Luke chapter uh, 17, if you're turning there, you know, we're just talking about being thankful and how, how thankfulness is uh, one of the expressions of worship. It reminds me of... Uh, uh, the little uh, lady who was out there, um, senior lady, she was out shopping, and she gets out to her parking lot, and, and she, she realizes she had lock, locked her keys in her car, you know. And so she gets a coat hanger out, and she's trying for 20, 30 minutes, trying to, trying to unlock the car with a coat hanger. And all of a sudden, this, this guy in this Harley Davidson comes rolling up, and he gets out, and he's got the leather jacket, and he's got the, the tats, and he's got, uh, he's got the piercings, and, and uh, you know, he's, he's just, he looks like a tough guy, right? And he's got Hell's Angels written on the back of his jacket or something like that, you know? And then he gets out there, and he, he says, what's going on? She says, well, I locked my keys in, in my car, and he reaches in, he grabs something, I don't know, I don't, he grabs something, and he reaches in there, and in about 10 seconds, he has her car o- door open, says, there you go, and she says, oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, I appreciate that, you sent this nice young gentleman here to help me out, and he stopped her, he says, nice young gentleman, lady, I ain't, I ain't anything but nice, he says, I am, I'm one of the meanest guys you'll ever meet in your life, in fact, I just got out of prison for grand theft auto, and she lifted up her hands like this, she said, thank you, Jesus, you sent me a professional, like that, (laughs) <laughs> anyway, <laughs> praise God. Hey, thankfulness for any occasion, right? Is that what it is? Luke chapter 17, we're going to begin in verse uh, number 11. And uh, we got a little bit more of this chapter in, in, in our service next Sunday, but uh, we're, we're starting here kind of halfway down, and then we'll go back and get the rest of it next week. But uh, uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 17, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then... As he entered, and by the way, I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, if you're interested or you're, you have your phone turned on, your Bible app. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers. So story starting to sound familiar to you? Okay. Who stood afar off. And, and I, I have underlined those words, who stood afar off. That's going to come back to us. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus... Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. 
and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. So, so there it is right there, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, now, he, now he's talking to the man here, and he says, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the other nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. In, in, in the past, I don't know, three months, we have been talking about worship. And, and we have kind of a working definition of it. Um, worship is expressing our love to God. It's expressed love to God. And I know that there are many different ways that we express our love to God. And in the last few months, we've actually talked about many, many of those ways, those different forms of expression um, um, that, we, that we do in, in, in worship. And uh, we've repeated many times about how to express our love to God. And and we, and we realize, uh, and you should know, at least you should know by now after, after three months, that um, if it's not expressed, then there's levels of it that isn't even really worship. It's important. Um, but there is a feeling, or an attitude, I guess, would be a better way of putting it, that, that some folks have that, that will say, isn't it really about the heart, this whole business of worship? In other words, I'm thankful inside my heart. And, you know, the Bible does say every time we come to God, if we're asking him for anything, we're, we're connecting to him in prayer. We're let, let your request be made known. But before it says, let your request be made known, it says in all things through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Um, but I know that there are folks in here over the last few months who have been thinking to, to yourselves, you know, Pastor, we don't all express ourselves the same way. And that's a, fair, that's a fair statement, by the way. Nothing wrong with thinking that. In fact, I actually had a guy come to me uh, during, this, during this theme series that we started in the beginning of the year and say to me, Pastor, and he was being genuine. He said, and he's here in the room today, so that's okay. He doesn't mind. I asked him if it was okay if I share this. And he said, uh, he said, so I, I'm really more of an introvert. Help me out. And the intents of our heart. Doesn't that also apply to worship? And my short answer was yes, sort of. Yes, sort of. So, for example, um, we know by pictures that God has given to us that, that really define our relationship with him is the picture of the biblical version of marriage. And notice I said the biblical version of marriage because the world has taken marriage and put their form on it and it ain't a, nothing like what God designed. Amen. So, so let's get that straight right off the bat. And he showed us that. It's, it's the marriage between a husband and a wife. By the way, are, who are we? We are, we are known as the bride, bride of Christ. But, and, and I, I don't mean to be harping on this example, so, so please just give me a little bit of grace this morning. But if I regularly said to her, Taffetha D. Reith Gooch, I love you. And she always responded with, well, thank you. Thank you very much. It kind of sounded like Elvis there for a moment, didn't it? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> right? Or, or worse, she just gave me the nod. How many know that after a while, I might start to question her heart towards me? I might start to actually question her, her heart towards me, okay? Um, <laughs> 
Now I realize that we're not all cut from the same cloth. And I realize this morning that, that not all of us express ourselves uh, the, the same way, okay? Um, but we've spent the last three months talking about expressing ourselves in worship. And there are biblical expressions of worship. And notice I said biblical expressions. Why did I say it like that? Just so you know, I don't mean my expressions. And we're not talking about Taffy's expressions of worship or Pastor Steve or Gary's, okay? Um, and we're not talking about your, your grandma's expressions of worship or, or the church you grew up in. Okay, I'm not talking about the denominational expression. I'm not talking about the Baptist expression of worship or the, or the Nazarene or the Methodist or, or the... Pentecostal version, or the Presbyterian, or the Presbycostal. I'm not talking about any of those, okay? I'm talking about a, a biblical expression of worship, um, and, and, and it's important that we understand that. Uh, they came from the Bible. And not only did they come from the Bible, but God says, here, here, are, the, here are these expressions. It's not an option. I want you to do it. And, and all the expressions of worship that we've talked about in the last three months, anywhere in there, nowhere in there did it, did it preface it by saying, as long as it lined up with your gift mix or your personality type, then that is okay to express in, in that way. It didn't ever said that. I, uh, I want to tell you a little bit, a little, little story, because I was actually, um, I was actually a pastor, associate pastor. I was preaching. I was writing sermons. Taffy and I were married um, at, at the time, so we hadn't been married that long, you know, maybe four years or whatever. I think Serena was just a baby. And uh, um, uh, Pastor Hillary was the senior pastor. I was Pastor Hillary's associate pastor. And uh, at, at that time, I, I knew how to be expressive in worship. I mean, by then, I had, and I told you this early in the series, that I, I wasn't always able to lift my hands in, in worship. Because it, to lift my hands meant that I was, I felt like I was pulling attention on myself. There were some doctrinal things that I grew up in, you know, that you just didn't do certain things like that because you got scolded in church if you lifted your hands up, right? They put that hand down like that, you know. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it. So there were, some, there were some issues there. But for me, it was more about the fact that I was an introvert. I was very shy, very backward. And so, so but by, by, by the time I'm about to tell you what I'm about to tell you, I had already mastered the hand lift, I'm, I'm way past half mast by now. You know what I'm saying? In fact, for a long time, I was at half mast. And I had, I had a good friend of mine, he looked at me one time, we were in worship, and I, I was at half mast, and he looked at me and he says, who died? I said, what are you talking about? He said, come on, man, get your hands up. Like that. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah. You know, like, oh, oh, oh. You know, like that. But by, by this, by, by this story, I already, I already mastered the hand raise. And I was good at it. I, I, knew, how to, I knew how to lift my hands up. I knew how to wave it like that. I, I even had it. I, I was able to do the, the, the chest tap like this with my hand. I had, it, I had it all down. It was all good, right? But there was one area of my life in the area of worship that I had not yet surrendered to God. So I was in my room. Uh, Taffy, I think, was gone. I was all by myself. I was at home, and, uh, and I was actually preparing a sermon. And while I was preparing the sermon, the Spirit of the Lord started talking to me. And he said, will you shout for me? And I, I said, here? He said, will you shout for me? Seems kind of weird, Lord. I'm here all by myself. <laughs> Will you shout for me? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then I kind of quickly looked to see if anybody was... <laughs> this is the crazy part. I actually embarrassed myself in front of me. <laughs> and then the Lord said, he said this, Will you do that this coming Sunday in worship service? And I said, listen, Lord. Uh, we've been together a long time. And I think by now it, it might be the right time to tell you that there are some things about me that you don't know. Um, I am really shy. Um, I don't do that, Lord. I don't, there are other people that shout, and I'm good with it. I, I'm not a shouter, particularly in, in social settings. And I said, Lord, do you remember... I was hitting on all the theological high points. Lord, do you remember when I was in Little League and the coach, Coach Naw, used to get mad at me when, when our team was out in the field and everyone else was, was chattering at the batter and I wouldn't chatter? Uh, hey, batter, 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 batter. Hey, batter, 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 batter. Swing, batter, batter, batter. Right? And I couldn't do it. Everybody else, he'd get so mad at me. And Coach Nall, I said, Lord, you remember Coach Nall used to get in my face and get mad at me. He said, you get out there and chatter. Couldn't do it. I can't do it. I can't, I can't yell out. I can't shout. So, Lord, it's not, it's not part of my DNA. A couple weeks go by, and now we're up, at, we're up at our trailer, Taffy's family's trailer up in the Bishop area, up in the High Sierras. Beautiful country. Uh, right where the trailer sat all year long, about 15 feet from the back of the trailer, there was a stream that came down, natural stream came down right out of Goodell Creek, uh, right out of the high sea. It was beautiful. We used to catch fish right there. I have pictures of Serena and Hillary before they even knew how to wind a fish, and they would just they'd hook a fish and then pull it, pull it up out of the water and, w- and walk back to our trailer right there 15 feet. It's an awesome time our family used to have. Now, this particular week, um, our, our, we were up there. It, Serena was a baby at the time. Uh, my dad was there, uh, your mom and dad, obviously, you and Taffy and I and Serena, and then um, her brother Ty and his family were, were there. And so it, it, one of the evenings, uh, real, real late in the evening, or start, um, not quite dark yet, a few of us guys, we decided we were going to go do some fishing. And about 100 yards up, there was a fishing hole, pond. And so we got our poles, and it was Ty and my dad and myself. And we, we got up there to the fishing hole, and I was on one side of the pond, and they, my dad and Ty, they were on the other side of the pond. And we were just there fishing, just enjoying. Wow, that's beautiful, man. Look at this. It's awesome. And all of a sudden, we heard, <sighs> and we looked up, and standing behind me was the biggest, baddest bull you'd ever seen. It was Ferdinand, y'all. I mean, this thing was, this thing had horns. It, it was big, it, was, it looked mean, and, and, and we didn't know if it was wild or it escaped from some farm or something out there in the middle of nowhere. We didn't know where the bull came from. All we knew is he did not want us in his space. And he was pounding his leg like that on the ground, and he was shaking his horns at us. And Ty, he says, now listen, he says, you, you cannot outrun this bull. He said, slowly put the pole to the ground and just, just step back, just, just start slowly walking backwards like this. So, okay. So I, I was putting the pole to the ground, and I heard a rustling behind me, and I looked, and my dad and Ty are running for their lives back to the trailer. <laughs> Full sprint. Well, Ferdinand, he didn't like that. And he took off after me. And I, start, I dropped, I started running, and that guy, that dude was on my heels, man. He was like... I'm running. I ran all the way through to the camp, and, 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 and there are people standing out like from their trailers, like watching this whole scene unfold, this bull chasing me through the camp. And as I'm running through the camp, I'm yelling, Jesus, 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 like that. And finally, he gives up the chase, and I run inside the trailer, and, ooh, man. And I, I walked up to Ty, and I was like, dude, like, you said that, that we can't outrun a bull. And he said we didn't have to be able to outrun the bull. <laughs> we just had to be able to outrun you. And now, now, y'all heard that as a joke before? That was real life for me, y'all. He said, now you, man. 
Okay, so, so a couple hours later, now we're, we're, all, we're all in bed, we're sleeping. I got the window of my bed open in the trailer, and I can hear the stream hitting over those rocks coming out of my mount windy at night. It's beautiful, it's quiet. You know, you can hear, you can hear some fluttering out there, maybe, maybe some bugs or something like that. Just, out there, just, just nature is beautiful, it's beautiful. And, and usually at night is when I start to meditate on what happened during the day, and I'm, I'm just quiet, and I start to think about how blessed I am. God, you're so amazing. Got my family here. Wow, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to be. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord speak up to me. And he said, looks like you're able to shout to me after all. (laughs) You know what I think the Lord was doing? He was challenging my excuses. In essence, I think the Lord was saying to me, that's a bunch of bull. <laughs> right? Yeah. There's, a, there's, there's, a, there's a big point that I want to make, one big thought for today. Now, if we're talking about bullet points, I normally have two or three or four. I only have one today, so it's going to be easy, okay? Here's our one big thought for today. Okay, if you're, so if you're taking notes, here it is. Worship. Worship is giving thanks to God. It, it's giving thanks to God. Now, I know there's some of you who are like, right now, you're like, you hear that and you're like, finally, a worship that doesn't require me to do calisthenics, right? Worship is simply giving thanks to God. The, the guy in our story in Luke chapter 17, it, it says he, he returns to give thanks to God. And obviously now, yes, thanks is it's all through the Bible. It's a biblical expression of worship. But, but can we assume, just for a moment, that the other nine lepers who, who were healed were also thankful? Do, do you think so? Like, like, as they went away, they, they were all, ten of them got healed. Let me ask you a question. Do you think the other nine that, that we don't really find out much more about, do you really think those nine were, were, were thankful? I think they probably were. Like, how can you not be thankful, right? Part number two of that question. Do you think it's possible that those other nine, that maybe they weren't as um, expressive in the way they give thanks as the guy that returned to give thanks? I think it's possible. I think it's very possible. And if God knows the thoughts and the intents of our heart, and he does... Why does he make such a big deal of the guy who returned to express his thanks openly? Here's why I think. I think it's because his gratitude was transformed into worship when it came from in here out to here. So so how did he do it? How did the guy express his gratitude to Jesus? So first of all, I want you to notice his outward expressions of, of his inward gratitude, okay? So here, here it goes. Verse number 15, I want us to go back to that. And so, so by the way, we, we kind of assume that all the other nine, the other nine, not just this guy, the other nine lepers, they were also grateful that they were healed. Well, who wouldn't be, okay? But, but what separated this guy from them? Verse 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice, notice with a loud voice, could he not have expressed gratitude to Jesus in a whisper? He could have. Well, we, we, there's other parts of the scripture where Jesus perceived their thoughts. Right? Could he not just have went, Right? Like when, I, like when I said, if I say to Taffy, I love you, and all she did, thank you. And if I, if I was to come back to her and say, now listen, you know, I'm really concerned about this. I say I, say I love you, and all you say is thank you. And, and, and imagine for a moment she says, well, I said thank you. <laughs> so, so he could have, he could have whispered it, he could have just, Right? I wonder if the Spirit of God said to him, will you shout for me? I don't know. It's happened before. 
And with a loud voice, he glorified God. Verse 16, and fell down on his face. That's a posture of worship. At his feet, giving him thanks. So obviously, this guy has reached a point in his life where he doesn't care who's looking at him. I mean, something amazing has happened in his life, and he doesn't care who sees his gratitude. He just wants to express it, and he worships in this big way. And come on, church, I get it, man. Like, I, I get that we don't, all, we don't all express ourselves the same way. And, and throughout this, this, the, the last three months, the purpose of this theme is not to try to get us all to express ourselves the, the same way. But what I am trying to do is, is to get you to kind of push back at some of those internal dialogues and those excuses that are keeping you confined on the inside and, and to somehow, some way, do something that will express your gratitude for what God has done in your life. Right? Come on, somebody. Amen. Now, there, uh, there are, I, I thought it would be a, a, a nice segue here. There are actually seven Hebrew words for the word worship, that we get the word worship in the scriptures. It, it's not a hard look up. You can find it. You, can, you just Google it just like that. I'm telling you, it's easy to find. You can Google, you can Yahoo. Do they still do Yahoo? I don't know. Anyway, so you can, I know you drink them, but I don't know if you, so watch this, check it out. So, so you can search, put in the Google search sometime and just say seven Hebrew words for worship. And you'll, you'll come up with the same list. And there's some different variations depending on who did the study. But, but I thought it would be interesting to just give you those seven Hebrew words for the word worship. And it's going to mean something to you. And there's a reason why we're doing this. Okay. So as, 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 I, as I read these, I want you to see if you can find the common thread in every one of these definitions. Okay? Okay, here we go. Ready? The first one is this, yada. Okay, yada. And, and here's what it means. To give thanks by throwing your hands up and making proclamation about God. Okay? Number two, tada. So this is a variation of the first one. The first one was yada, and, and the second one is tada. And it means to lift your hands in thanksgiving with a worship choir. So, so here's how I learned how to, how to memorize this, okay? So you lift up your hands, and this is what happened to me the first time I did. It was like, ta-da! Okay, anyway, sorry, that's dumb. Okay, watch this. Shabak, shabak. It means to give thanks in loud, joyous shouts of testimony. Now, can I just say something right now? A, a testimony isn't a testimony until it's been testified, in other words, you ain't, you, ain't testimo- you ain't testifying just by feeling gratitude towards God in your heart. That doesn't testify. Okay, one of the forms of worship is Shabbat, to give thanks to, in, in loud, joyous shouts of testimony. So throughout our services, all, every week, you'll hear throughout the service different places, you'll hear someone shout out in response to something that's said or sung. You'll hear someone shout out, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, right? You'll often hear it. Okay, this is what that is right there. Uh, the, the fourth one is zamar. It means to give thanks with a musical instrument. Just what it sounds like. Then number five, halal. It means to give thanks by jumping, dancing, being loud, and clamorously foolish. Remember King, da- King David? Remember him? They are bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. Right? And he's bringing it back, right? Because the Philistines had it. They got it back. Now he's like so, so grateful to the Lord. They're bringing the Ark of the Covenant back. And he's dancing as they enter into Jerusalem. And he's dancing so clamorously. And he, all of his clothes come off. And his, and his wife is looking out the window. And she's like, oh, my. Right? And she's, she tells him, she says, you embarrassed us today. And he says, darling, I wasn't doing that for you. I was doing that for the one who saved my life. Amen. So anyway. So, hala. So, number six, barak. It means to kneel in submission and thanksgiving. And then this last one, number seven, tequila. Tequila. Not to be confused with tequila, okay? (laughs) Although, that one you can probably start feeling joyful too after a while. I don't know. 
Not that I would know anything about that. If you want to know more about that, you'd have to ask Kathy Breyer. But anyway, my point is, I'm sorry, I'm just, just a joke. Kathy does not drink tequila on Sundays. Okay, anyway, so... Okay, tequila, tequila, to sing a spontaneous, unrehearsed song to the Lord in thanksgiving. From out, and then some, some variations say from out of your spirit. Just a song, an unrehearsed, spontaneous song to the Lord, right? Okay, so, so yes, the answer is having a thankful heart is a personal inward gratitude between you and God. But, but... Did you notice that not one of these attitudes of gratitude stayed confined to the heart? Not, not a one. Not a one. There, there's actually one scripture in the Bible where four of these Hebrew words for worship actually show up in one verse. So, so I'll, 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 I'll quote the verse and then you, I'll see if you can tell me where it's from. Okay? No, no pressure. If you can't, well, I, I already have it written down so I know. <laughs> Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful and bless his name. Okay, that's the, that's the verse. And where it's from? I saw something. Psalms 100. Yeah. Verse 4 to be exact. Okay? So we got some Bible students in the room. Yeah. Psalm 100, verse 4. Now, I'm, I'm going I'm to show you where those four words show up, those Hebrew words. Okay? Here we go. Okay? Enter his gates with thanksgiving. That word thanksgiving is the word to dah. Ta-da, right? And it means a thanksgiving choir. Okay, and into his courts with praise. The word praise is tehila, singing spontaneous praises. Be thankful. The word thankful is yada, extending your hands in worship to him and bless Barak or kneel before his name. So I, here's, I want to read that. If, if, you are, if you are Hebrew students and we were, we were speaking in Hebrew, and I, were, I, was to, I, was, I was to read this verse in Hebrew. This is exactly the way you would hear this verse being read. Okay, are you ready? Enter his gates with a thanksgiving choir and into his courts with spontaneous praises. Be thankful by throwing up your hands to him and bless him by bowing before his name. Wow, wow, wow. What's he saying? He's saying express what's in your heart to God. And, and again, church, if it's not from your heart, it's not real worship. But also, if it's not expressed, it's not real worship. It's, it must be expressed. Now, your verse number 15. Let's go back to Luke 15. Uh, and Luke 17, verse 15. And, and it says, and one of them, notice the next three words, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. The reason he was grateful is because he had just received a miracle. You, you don't say thank you and, and you haven't received a gift. You, you say thank you after you receive a gift. Like how weird would it be like if I went up to Pam and Bill after service and I said, uh, <laughs> thank you. And they were like, for what? <laughs> Thank you. For what? You know. For that gift that you're going to get me for Pastor Appreciation Sunday. <laughs> Can we all say it together? Awkward. Right? No, you don't say thank you. You, don't, you say thank you after you receive a gift. That This guy, this guy came back. And he said, thank you, because he had just received a miracle. And his thank you was transformed into worship. That's, that's what worship is. It's, it's giving thanks. This guy came back, and with a loud voice, he fell down at his feet before Jesus. He fell down on his face before Jesus' feet, glorifying God and giving thanks. Now, let me ask you a question. I know that seems kind of big, and I know it, it's... It's like you're, you're thinking, I'm, not, I'm just not that expressive. But let me ask you a question. Was that, was the way that guy expressed himself, falling down on his face with loud voices glorifying God, was that, was that appropriate? 
It was, wasn't it? Well, maybe if, if for those of you don't, not sure yet, let's, let's understand what he's been healed from. Uh, leprosy is not a walk in the park. And back in those days, it, it, was, it was a death sentence, but it was a grueling, slow, torturous death process. Um, where the disease, bacterial, it would actually begin to eat away at your digits. It would eat your flesh. And then it would turn its sights inwardly and begin to eat your, go into vital organs. And it was, it was, it was horrible. And uh, back then, they would require you by law to live in what they called a leper colony be, with other lepers because they believed it to be extremely contagious. Now, not to downplay it, it it's... It is contagious, but not at the level that they thought it was. I mean, there, there's, there's things that you could do, because um, there's modern-day leprosy, although we, we have medication and whatnot, but there's, there's things you can do to protect yourself and the people around you so you're not put into a leper colony, right? Um, but they didn't know that, and they didn't have medication. And so this guy, he was, he was away from his family, this, this, this disease had, had just ruined his life. He, he, he's no longer able to kiss his wife goodbye at night. He's not going to be there to see his children grow up. He's not going to see them graduate from high school. He won't be able to walk his daughter down the aisle. He can't go to church and fellowship. He, he can't spend time with friends and loved ones. He, he, he can't go, work and support his family. He's, he's outcast in, from society. He's, he's a social outcast. He's a religious outcast. He's a societal outcast. He's a, he, he's, he's a relational outcast. His life is ruined, and on top of that, it's extremely painful. And medication wasn't there to, 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 to help him or ease the pain. And, and so you would literally, in these, in these isolated places, away from everyone you love and the life that you thought you were going to live, and, and you're in this place and you're watching your body eat itself. Now, I don't mean to be graphic this morning or be gross or for effect, but you would literally, like, you, you, you wouldn't be able to sleep at night. You'd just be laying there just in agony and pain, and you wake up the next morning and, and you'd have fingers missing. That, that were there when you went to bed the night before. And if it wasn't even worse, the, the disease would, would begin to turn on into itself, and you would literally, it, it would eat, you would eat yourself and then die. That's what this guy was dealing with, and Jesus healed him. Jesus healed him. So, so let me ask you again. Was it appropriate for him to worship the way he did? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. What if you had a disease that separated you from your family and your loved ones forever and stole the purpose from off your life and Jesus healed you? Would it be appropriate then for you to come and express your thanks when we come together and worship? And how many of us had a disease called sin? That Jesus healed. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. I, I want to read this. You're not going to be able to turn to it unless you have something called the passage, the, the Passion Translation. So let me just read it to you. I got it up on the screen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. It says this, So don't forget that you were not born as Jews. Talking to us, Gentiles. You were foreigners to Israel's incredible heritage. You were without the covenants and prophetic promises of the Messiah, the promised hope, and you were without God. 
Next verse. Yet look at you now. You who had failed over and over again, yet look at you now. What about all the mistakes that you made? Yet look at you now. What, what about all those times you didn't honor God in your life and you ran from God and didn't obey him or didn't serve him? Yet look at you now. <laughs> Everything is new. Although you were once distant and far away from God. You remember the guys in our story? We started out the passage in Luke 17, and it says, and there were 10 of them, and, and, and they were far away from Jesus, and from afar they would yell out. And you who were far away from God, now you have been brought delightfully close to him through the sacred blood of Jesus. You have actually been united with Christ. Amen. Now, now. Is it appropriate for you to express your thanks to God in worship? Yes. Yeah. What if, say 25 years after Luke 17, what if, <laughs> what if this guy's walking along and he sees Jesus? Now, that wasn't going to happen because Jesus wasn't going to stick around for 25 years. He had, he had an appointment on a place called Golgotha. But let's just, let's just say, what, what if, what if, okay? What if, what if he's walking along and 25 years later after he's all this, 25 years later he walks along and has 25 years of being with his wife. 20, 25 years of seeing his kids grow up. 25 years of meeting his grandbabies. 25 years of being a blessing to his community. 25 years of building relationships in church and relationships in community. 25 years. 25 years of living life out of his purpose. And one day he's walking along and he sees Jesus. Question. Would it still be appropriate? For him to fall on his face and with a loud voice <laughs> glorify God. How, how long have you been saved? Right here, right here. How long have you been saved? How long have you been saved? Yeah. Since you were 10, so 15 years? Okay, how, how long have you been saved? Yeah. How, how long have you been saved? 25 years? Yeah. Kristen, how long have you been saved? 40 years. How long have you been saved? Right here, Kathy. 30 years. Well, Melissa. Huh? 26 years. Is it still appropriate?
you're watching online and or you're or you're here today and you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, we want to invite you to do so this morning. Just simply say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I need a Savior. I ask that you forgive me of all my sin. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that simple prayer, we believe you got born again. You know, we, sometimes we don't know how God's, what he's going to do at an end of a service like that. We, we have notes, we plan, and, but there are moments when God just kind of takes over. It's happened, in this, it's happened this year a few times, hasn't it? Where we, we didn't plan it, you know. I, I feel like there's, there's repentance happening in the room today. I think, I think like people are turning things over to God that they haven't been able to turn over. And whatever it is, whatever God's been speaking to you, whatever he is, maybe he's challenging you to step up your worship level, or maybe he's asking you to surrender something you haven't been able to, whatever that is, just ask yourself, today, what has God been speaking to me in this service today? Amen? I, I, don't, I don't know of any, anybody who's tired that we went 10 minutes over our time today. Um, praise God. Anyway, Father, we thank you for all you've done for us. We do thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.